Hurry up. Um, oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, very special at home edition today. It's a little too cold out, but I will be going up on the roof around 655 so we can do that little celebration thing that we always do at the end of the night. Um, be going live on my Facebook as well. No, I'll just be here because I'm on already on Facebook. So if you're expecting, it's going to be live on Facebook and Grillo's at the Shock XL. Uh, I want to give a big shout out right now to my producer, Noah, who has gone above and beyond anything uh for, for this show right now he, we uh it's official grillo's aftershock excel now has a website you could use that website to stream on youtube we're going to be putting up old, old shows old uh, old pictures you're going to be able to listen to some of the stuff i did over at pro media and with battle chats I did a live stream with battle chats today by bringing everybody over to the new youtube channel and we got the facebook page and then uh, well, eventually we'll be on instagram and Twitter, we're, 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 we're moving along, we're rocking and rolling, and it's all because of Noah Platt. Thank you so much for all your help. Uh, I guess this worked out because, you know, Noah's a very talented lighting designer, and, well, there's no plays going on, so I, I guess I get the benefit of his genius. So thanks again, Noah, for all your hard help. Uh, we're, there's a company that uh, we're, we're going to, uh, it's called, I got to remember this, Barty, Bib, Barty Bibbs. He just sent me the picture they made aftershock xl party bibs aftershock xl face masks so if you want an aftershock xl face mask the first five people that uh, i am me on the facebook page uh i will send that out to you my cousin Lori uh, did that yesterday she'll be getting one and they're that so uh they're making donating facebook masks uh, uh, masks for everybody out there that's working they usually do customized t-shirts but they turned it into Something positive for all the people out there putting their lives in danger. It's a very weird time, I know, but you know, how much you know, you can look at my beautiful face instead of like, you know, watching somebody uh, on Netflix, you know, something different out of the ordinary. I decided to do the show from down here tonight because it's kind of cold and it looks like it's going to rain, but I will be going up to the roof to celebrate and thank everybody that, like we always do. And today, Stacy is here. I wanted to, I want to start the show off with like all the people that have been. Part of Aftershock XL since the beginning. Uh, my very good friend Stacy Pressman is here. Is there Stacy? Sta hey. Hi, everybody knows hey, Stacy. <laughs> She's a very talented comedian, famous uh, actress, and uh, another. She has her famous podcast and everything. So uh, I figured at the beginning of the show yesterday, I had Jesse Nash. He was a big part of the show, and Stacy's been a big part of the show from the beginning too. Stop doing the duck lips, Stacy. Give me a break. My hand. Were you from Long Island? Stop. So I just wanted, I wanted to start off the show by, of course, MC Search is definitely coming on today. I'm waiting for DMC to confirm. He did confirm as of two days yesterday, but he hasn't DMC? confirmed. Yeah. So he hasn't confirmed yet. But I wanted Stacey to come on the first 15 minutes. I think Search should be coming on around 6.15. So Stacey to come on the first 15 minutes and, you know, bring some normalcy back to the show. You're a familiar face. You've been part of the show before we even started Aftershock XL, it was back when we were doing it at the old offices and we were Retro Radio Live. We've been podcasting for a long time, oh right? Oh my God. When I would bring my equipment, I would drag it from my apartment in a suitcase, like heavy equipment, and I'd bring it to your office. And then we would yeah. do it with, with, that, with that crazy guy. But we were responsible for the, the Warriors reunion. Everybody knows the movie, The Warriors. Uh, the crazy guy that we did the show with, uh, he knew Dorothy Wright and... What was the other guy? Uh, Harris. Uh, guys, uh, Harris. Um, David Harris. David Harris and Dorsey Wright came on our show, and they expressed interest in having a Warriors reunion on our show. And that crazy guy somehow or another organized that whole Warriors reunion that happened in Coney Island that first year. So, what little right. fact people don't know is that Warriors reunion started with me and Stacy. But we didn't, we didn't get any of the profits. That's and then we got nothing. <laughs> that, and then the second year they did it, that guy stole everything, faked a heart attack. Mason Reed, uh, even Stacy can't make you look normal. Oh, hey, <laughs> so my hair, um, I'm like, I, my hair, it's like, it's, I feel like Steve's like, come on the show. I'm like, oh my god, I have to keep clothes on. Like I, you got, you got I your, have, your like, I got my quarantine face. 
It's like my hair. It's like my. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My hair's not washed. I, I, yeah, look, you look beautiful, Stacey. Don't worry about it. So I how's everything like, going? How are you? Everybody good in your family? How's mom? I mean, thank God. Every you know, thank the Lord. Thank God. Thank the universe. I mean, my mom and I are healthy, physically, mentally. I want to kill her, and yeah. she wants to kill me. What's but, gonna um, What's gonna be, What's gonna be the death of you guys? The, the coronavirus from living together. Probably living together. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. You look healthy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Alcohol preserves things, kills germs. Um, I, you know, it's been rough. I mean, I don't. I, I'm like confused. I don't know what's going on at the time, which I yeah, didn't I know. know beforehand, but now I really don't know what's going on. Well, what do you do? And, that, what, 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 what's one thing you do that try that try to keep yourself normal? What's one thing that you know helps you not jump off the building? Drink coffee. I've been drinking a lot of coffee, uh, which I always do. Uh, I've been cooking a lot for myself, which yeah, is me really too. good. Yeah, Upgrade um, wants to say hi. Hey! <laughs> he won't leave me alone. He, has to, he didn't move all day. As soon as I got the computer out, he's all over me. And that's up. Who's that? That's Upgrade? That's Upgrade. Aww. How's Shirley doing? She's good. She's sleeping. She'll be yeah. up later. She's such a sweet yeah. cat. You have, your cats, I mean, everyone's pets will be so happy they're home and everything like that. Oh, every room I go to, they follow me. I go to the bedroom, they're in there. I go to the, the other room, so because that's right. get Because I, I don't have a roommate yet, because I was supposed to get one. And then everybody, you know, it was like the day before quarantine, and the girl called me up. She's like, uh, I'm going to be late. Someone in my office tested positive. I was like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe like, for me. Maybe I'll move in. Come on. Come on down. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah no. You know, we'd, yeah. I think we'd get along. We'd have a great. Oh, time. I know we would get along. I, I'm, an, I'm really easy to get along with. Um, I, you know, I don't even know what's going on. Like, I have show a show booked in August, right, far away, like in Washington State. Like, do I like buy a plane ticket now because it's cheap? Like, what do I do? You know? Yeah, or I, like you know, that's the whole other thing too. Is what's going to be the new normal now? You know, no handshakes, no kiss, no hugs. What? Like, right. like, like how do you hook up with somebody that you don't know? I, uh, I know that's a trust. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's, not, it's like AIDS in a way, without being AIDS. I mean, I don't yeah. Know it's like, I mean, AIDS is a is a true death sentence. Well, it was in the eighties. Yeah, and I know you plenty of people that. I know plenty of people that recovered. No, but, me too. I, you know, a lot of people recovered. Jeffrey Gurian, I'm so happy. Yeah, I've got a good friend of ours, Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey was on the show twice, and you know, he had two heart attacks, and he yeah, I, yeah. Not, not because of the the virus, but in the past he's had two heart attacks. And he um, he recovered. It, it was a long. It was a month, a month of sickness. Like what? Two weeks in the hospital. Yeah, but, I, I love uh, Jeffrey. He's been a friend of mine for years. I, I didn't realize I knew Jeffrey back in the day. Yeah, well, he used to hang out at Club Expo and stuff like that, and all that. I didn't. I, I I kind of put it together like when I started doing stand up. I'm like, oh, I knew you um, back. Well, when, wait, Mason Reese said the best analogy of Jeffrey, and it's really funny. He goes, Jeffrey would go to the opening of a tuna can. Oh my God! Yeah. He was at every <laughs> opening. <laughs> oh, he was at every opening, uh, every book signing, every movie premiere, everything. My Jeffrey God, was I'm always there. So, me. Uh, yeah, Mason was like, he, he'd go to the opening of a tuna can. I was like, I'm so stealing that. <laughs> he would so, go to the opening of yeah. He got yeah. he got in, and you know what though? He didn't sneak in. He got in because he has creds. People. And uh, he's been very loyal. No, he's been so good. Like. He comes to everything. He's supportive. Yeah. He came to the vagina monologues. He came to the opening of the vagina monologues. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going, he'll even come to the opening of your legs. <laughs> and Mason, I mean, Mason, thumbs up. I hope so Mason, Mason, Mason's, Mason's on. Hope. Mason's on watching. Say hello to Mason. Hey, Mason. I love Mason. Hey, Mason. I hope somebody comes to the opening of my legs soon because. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Oh my god! I miss hanging out with you. I call my I call my vagina my wet market. Oh yeah, there you. Oh shit, it's closed. <laughs> a lot of disease comes from there. Oh really? Yeah, and you should you shouldn't eat anything from there. <laughs> I keep thinking of like like analogies for my vagina. Like I do these, you know. I'm like I can't stop thinking about my vagina. Yeah. Oh yeah. I can't stop. Oh, yeah. I, I can't stop thinking about your vagina too. My hair. I. I can't, your hair is beautiful. I, mean, I'm, like, nuts, I feel like. First of all, it took me like, all right, I'm going to be very, like, I didn't even masturbate like the first few. I was so in shock by this whole pandemic. I didn't even masturbate. I, I, like, I, I, I do that so much. Air comes out now. I know. We talked about that. I'm like, <laughs> I, I felt like unhorny and then all of a sudden I got horny all of a sudden. So yeah. I don't know what well, that means. Pornhub is my special friend. Really? Is it free? Yeah, yeah it's free. 
You can find anything on there. Anything. You know the problem is I've met so many porn stars. I start masturbating and then I'm like, oh, I know her, and I feel weird. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that happened always... a couple of times. Oh, I'm, like, I'm oh, she's sorry. my friend. I've met her. She's pretty. Yeah. It's weird when you, it has to be like detached. And the guys have never had enough, so I like to watch gay porn. Oh no, no thanks. No, I mean I know you. My, I because I like to watch the, the hot guys and their nice asses. Okay, well, well they, they're, they're usually really good looking in porn anyway. It's not like not the gay porn. They're, they're dogs. Half of them are dogs. Okay, I just confirmed. Tomorrow, six o'clock, Brian O'Halloran will be joining us. Oh, tell Brian I said hi. I will. He just confirmed he's available. So if you're listening, tomorrow's show will be Brian O'Halloran and hopefully Roy McDonald. Uh, we all get along so well. Roy McDonald, he is the creator and owner of Bright Shot, the best LED light in the country. When all this is over, there's going to be a lot of production. You need to go to brightshot.com. Noah, there you go, right on point, my man. Does bright does bright shot sell lights for the house that you could do? Well, um, yeah, they're on, they're in my ceiling right now. Here, look. Oh no, see I that? don't mean those. But I mean, oh, oh yeah, like like I'm thinking like to get, give an idea. Like they should do, now that we're all quarantined, people are doing a lot of Facebook lives and like to light people like small lights that they could light people's cameras with. Oh like, shit! Okay, yeah. well, Stace, I I I gotta I gotta cut you short. Well, I'll have you back on. Um, I got my first guest coming on right now, so um, okay. uh, you. well, you'll, you'll come back and do this. Go to StreamYard, check it out. It's really interesting. It's so easy to do. It's like this is how this is the future of podcasting right now. We so, have to do my show on StreamYard. Yeah, StreamYard, check it out. It's real easy to use. Stuttering John's doing it by himself, so there you go. Oh. Well, if he could do it by himself, then we there can all go. do it. Have all a right. great show. Sit. Okay. Good luck to everybody. Yeah. Thank you for getting me out into yeah. clothes. Bye. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Bye. And now, everybody. Yo, what, what up, man? man? What up? What up? What up? I'm so glad I put you up on this, so yeah, now you yeah. can act like you uh, you ran this, sh like yeah. you found this shit out. I, mean, I gave you props, yeah. man. I, gave I don't. You props. I don't remember hearing none of that. I heard Stutter yeah. and John. I said I heard... he's using it. Yeah, I, I said whatever. no. I gave you props whatever. yesterday. Whatever no. you say, B. Whatever. No, no. Well, everybody. Oh man, don't be yeah. like that, bro. No, no, no. It's all good. It's all good, man. <laughs> I see, I see how you treat us white people, man. Oh, shit. You so, yo, you're second class citizen, you know. Yeah, Slow class <laughs> citizen, man. Yo, right here is one of the coolest motherfuckers on the planet, let alone a hip hop icon, a hip hop le a legend, and one of the best MCs that were ever, ever on the planet. Well, that's very nice of you, brother. It's the fucking truth, motherfucker. Well, that's yeah, I know you a lot of profanity, but I, I you know, yeah. I appreciate it nonetheless, man. Yeah, Thank I know you. you run a you run a smooth game. You, you you're clean. You don't drink. You you play your, your shit right. You're calm, unlike me, where I curse and I'm wound up like tighter than a spring. See, this is the whole thing. I can I curse when it's when it's effective. I you know it's like I remember hearing Jerry Seinfeld one time saying that he doesn't work blue, but that doesn't mean he doesn't curse when it's effective. Yeah. So when you curse, it's really like New York cursing. Like that's yeah. what you do. You like, you know, that you sound like you're cursing at somebody trying at a bodega trying to get an extra Chico stick from you. <laughs> yeah, no, like, but... look, motherfucker, that's my Chico stick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck out of here. Yo, you I'm, know, so... I'm trying to get those sour patch gummy bears. What right. Fuck? fuck out. Yo, what you doing? Yo, I want to make fucking Swedish fish. Yeah, I want to make you got your hand in, you know. So. I want flaming hot takis, man. Get out of my way. Yo, man, those are my hot tamales, B. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, that's how you sound. And, and I love that. I mean, I miss parts of New York that are like that. So you recreate it for me, and, and I appreciate that. Thank yeah, because you, you, yeah, you, you're from Far Rockaway. And that's why when, we, we, you know, I grew up in Kenoshi, right across the water. And mm -hmm. when, you guys, when, you, when you guys first broke, you know, it was like, you know, the like neighborhood heroes, man. You know, it was like, we were like, yo, some of us just broke out and made it, you know, because, you know, mm -hmm. you know they were, DMC was from Queens, you know, then it was Thomas. people down from the boogie down. And then, mm -hmm. you know, then you guys came, it was like, I know uh, Rockaway is from, is Queens, but to us, it was part of Brooklyn, you know? No, that's right. Because when you went over the Re the Reese Park Bridge, when you went over yeah. there, Marine Park Bridge, yeah. you went to Reese Park, it almost felt like an extension of Brooklyn. And then, you know, when you went to 116th Street, that all felt like, it was all, uh, you know, distinct part of, of, of Brooklyn. And I remember when I, I met Riz and I met all the guys like yeah, Macro Riz and, from Kenoshi, you and know, Bill and all those yeah. guys, you know. So when I met all those dudes and we formed nonfiction, it was 
interesting to you know kind of go back and forth with them and actually we built a studio in Canarsie when we were working on the nonfiction album and it it felt like home you know it felt like when I was near Canarsie and, and the projects over there it felt like Hamels Hamel yeah. projects and on 40th street so uh, I, I think a lot of people I don't know the Bayview projects because my boy was in there I was like one of the few white boys that get a pass that didn't get jumped and got their bike stolen so um you're the I only one because I got my shit stolen all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, my, I, my, yo, my mom was like, at one point, she just stopped buying me bikes. Yeah. Like, she was just like, yeah, no, you're getting robbed all the time. It's not yeah. happening. Anymore. And then, then there was also, you know, uh, Starrett City, too. So, yeah. Oh, Starrett City. But Starrett City, see, the thing, Starrett City's Brooklyn. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't care what people, that's Brooklyn. So, there's this, you know, and again, for people who are, you know, obviously, either, you know, New York by heart or, you know, out of the city that, you know, don't understand, like, you know, the five boroughs and, and obviously the reason why, you know, the coronavirus is, is happening. So, um, so uh, intensely is people don't understand how tight everything is. And even in the five boroughs, like, Everything, all the townhouses are next to each other. The project. Yeah, my house is attached to another house, attached to another house. Right. You could hear, you could hear the people banging next door. You know. Exactly right. So it, you know, so when you have that kind of intense surroundings, it's why it's even more important. Why people need to stay home, just chill, don't get caught up, don't you know feel like isolation, craziness. Like, find ways to just create podcasts, create entertainment clean your house a little more, you know, knock it down with your significant other a little more, you know, find better things to do, but don't feel like going outside is, um, is being taken away from you. And no, but it, you know, don't, I, I was telling uh, you, cause you got a podcast as well. And I was on your podcast on three, like, and my, my big message to everybody is stop taking unnecessary risks. Stop, you know, where you're going to put yourself in a situation where you might have to go to the hospital, you know, and it just you you do that you're taking away a bed from somebody a doctor a nurse and if they think you're out doing something stupid and not listening to what's going on they're gonna like they're gonna put you in a fucking utility closet bro they ain't gonna you you, you didn't listen to the rules i got people here that did listen to the rules they got sick I, i'm gonna take care of them because you've been stupid you know no 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 you're absolutely right and 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 again like you know as you see this you know this epidemic growing you know you look at how disproportionate it is in cities like Detroit, Chicago, even now Milwaukee, Atlanta, you know, people that are in close proximity to each other who feel like either they're invincible or this is fake news or whatever the case may be, you know, even look at North Carolina, like North Carolina is now the, the newest hotspot. Um, we just need to sit, stay put, man. We really need to stay put. And we need yeah, to I, really just, you know, hold back and, and let things go. Part of my route is down on uh, in Al Alphabet City, and like Avenue D. Thank and, you, like, Fredro Fifty One. That is good advice. You're fucking right, Fredro Fifty One. What did he say? He said it was good advice. Oh, okay. Like yeah. Fredro. Okay, all right. Just, oh, just that mine came up a little late. That's okay. So, uh, but I'm down there, you know, in one of the, my, the bodegas I got to attend to. Yo, they got a boombox out. They got lawn chairs. They got coolers. They think it's a fucking block party, man. Uh, you know they, what? They ain't got masks on. Hey, hey. Don't be mad. Like at the end of the day, don't yeah. be mad. If you catch it, don't be mad. Like yeah, don't I gotta, be mad. I got to go down there and make sure that, that this place is taken care of in order for me to make a living. Now, you know, I, don't get me wrong. I got my mask, my hand sanitizer. I'm spraying and constantly, you know, not touching anything. I don't have to touch using my foot. But, you know, these people being stupid put my life in jeopardy. You know what I'm saying? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You know, it, before I started to wear a mask on a regular basis just to go outside to like, you know, get the mail. Um, it just strikes me as so strange when people don't, you know, like don't connect the dots and don't see that there is no flattening of the curve. The curve is not flattening. No, you know because I mean? like, yeah, you know, it's, it's not. It's slowly, slowly, slowly going up there. But if you go outside and start getting stupid, it's going to escalate again. So I got this company, Party Bibs, making me personal Aftershock XL face masks. Oh, so maybe cool. I'll hook you up with them. We get like an MC Surge face mask. 
-hmm. And uh, you can you can give them away. I'm going to be giving them away on my, you know, for anybody who I am, I am me uh, with an address, the first five. Uh, I'm going to mail them out to you. So, but you know, they're but they're doing good things too. They're donating all this shit to the hospitals. They make they turn their their t-shirt company into a face mask company. Oh, so that's great. I do because I would definitely Plumber rock. Uh, I would definitely rock an MC search face mask. That'd be cool. I w listen. I would rock a, a shock XL. Uh, XL, not an aftershock, just a shock G XL. Oh. <laughs> so uh, tell me, old school heads would know. Tell me about your the podcast. What's going on? So um, yeah, I mean it's the it's called the Search Says uh, podcast, and uh, it's a combination of hip hop culture and, uh, and, you know, current events. Um, I missed doing radio and I missed being on, you know, the air and we're in the process of working on a, you know, a, a podcast deal. So I was like, you know what, let me just start to play around in the podcast space. Let me see what time looks like. Let me see how we can break segments up. You know, let me see exactly what feels good. Um, and then people started to reach out, like, you know, Tom Green. So now it's like this whole fun thing, bro, where it's like I'm finding out all these people that I never expected to be hip-hop fans are hip-hop fans. Like, we're going to have John Cryer on tomorrow. I saw that. That's so men. cool. Yeah, you know, like... He's a huge hip-hop fan. Like, I met him through my social media, and he's a hip-hop head. You know, we're going to have Melissa Joan Hart, who's a hip-hop head. Wow. You know I mean, like, so it's like really, it's bananas. Um, Vernon Reed, Darius Rucker, like we're starting to line up all of these guests and, and the common denominator besides just being human beings is also kind of figuring out exactly how we have a lot of things in common. Me and John Cryer, you know, have a, a lot more in common than I, I was really surprised at how much we have in common. Wow. And, uh, like, well, like sort of like with me and you, like I'm such a huge fan you know, like uh, me and my guys, uh, Dayton representing right there. You are. Uh, you did that nice birthday wish for my cousin Jimmy. You gave him a big shout out. So I figured I put this. But you know, me cousin Jimmy's a little younger, but we had that connection, that third base connection from Ohio. So we used nice. to talk about third base and all that shit. And uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I was yeah. bugged out that you were just a fan because I was a fan of yours when you were on the Howard Stern show. You know, when they used to call you Gorilla. Like I and I know, like I'm a super fan. You know what I mean? Yeah, so no, no. I just I didn't. Them. You know, there's certain things that I don't connect with like hip hop and like, you know, whether it's Howard Stern or whether it's certain things in pop culture, you know, because I'm kind of sometimes in a, in a box, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, the thing and the people that I know that are obvious fans, right? Like, you know, the quest loves of the world or the Chris rocks of the world. Like I expect them to be fans, you know what I'm saying? But like Adam Sandler, I expect him to be a fan. Like Kevin James, I expect him to be a fan. But like when I find out like, you know, Danielle from like, you know, whatever blah, blah, blah show, which is, you know, one of the most whitest shows in the world. She's like a huge Wu-Tang fan. Like, it, you know, I'm like, oh God, I got to interview that person because it's, it's super interesting. Yeah, no, it's cool. Just give me one second. Hold on. I got to like check this out. Okay. Hold Essex, on. England. What up, man? Essex. Yo, cheers. Yo, man, grab a Guinness for me, please, man. I don't drink and don't smoke anymore, so grab a Guinness, brother. Shout out to Essex, England. Damn, it's like 11.30 in Essex. 11.23 in Essex. In Essex. That's dope. Yeah, I'm a little excited right now. Got so, that uh, international flavor right now going on, Gorilla. Yeah, I know that. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, so, um, yeah, I'm planning on doing something cool in a little bit. I'm just waiting for something to happen. So, oh, cool. Um, what was I going to ask you? So, uh, did you ever did think about like start making music again? Is that something that like you know um, I'm not a musician, so I don't understand. I always felt like you know you have that kind of talent, mm -hmm. and you you had so an ex huge level of success. It, are you so bored out on what's going on like uh, in the business, or you, you know because no, I would think that. like 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 here it comes like you know kick them in the grill, let's go, let's show them what you show what it's about because there's nothing, it's shit out there. Well, I disagree with you. I think there's a lot of great great hip-hop out here like really? um yo yeah no nah, this i'm missing it you, know, you gotta school me yeah i mean first of all even if you just look at like dj premier released a posthumous gangstar album two months ago called loyalty incredible incredible yeah. record you know what all i mean right. like yeah. incredible Th so that's a great record like anybody who's an og from like the 90s or whatever you know 
Gangstar is incredible. They're always going to be incredible. So to hear Primo beats today, DJ Premier beats over that, it's incredible. Kendrick Lamar is incredible. Joey Badass. There's a kid right up the block from you in Coney Island. Take it out oh! to 4G. <laughs> What's up? What's up? Damn. What's what? Up, Yo, happened? dude, look what I'm wearing. Ha <laughs> License to ill. No. What is I got a big white, white Cadillac oh, Seville and written right on the right side of reads dress, dress to kill. kill. What's going on? Happy birthday. Wow. Yeah, man. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> How are you, Dick? I'm all right. How you doing? I'm good, man. Yo, that's, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah, Steve was like, yo. He said, yo, you have, to, he said, you have to come on. I'm not going to tell him. We're going to surprise Wow. Him. Yeah, fuck you, Grillo. <laughs> wow, that's seven, crazy, seven, man. Good to see you too, brother. Damn. Yes, sir, man. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Grillo's that's trying it. to talk over us, and I'm like, fuck you, Grillo. He's in mute right now. I can't hear a fucking word he's saying. Good. <laughs> Right, Damn, right. man, it's so good to see you, brother. How you really been, good. man? I uh, can't complain, man. It's all, like you said, it's all good, man. We we hip-hopping and we going, not, no stopping. Nah, nah, not until exactly. the break of dawn, man. Real talk. Wow. Hell Are yeah. you healthy? Is everybody healthy? Everybody good on yes. your side? Yes, we just trying to beat the boredom. Really? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm yeah. not, you see, I'm like the only one. I'm not bored at all. You know what I'm really? saying? Like, I got so much to do, like, I, right. I I write every day. I oh yeah, yeah. I mean, outside day. of that, I, yeah. You know what I mean? I just, like, I, I, I get those um those groundhog groundhog day moments though. Right. Like I wake up, you know, after you do it, and you you know, it's probably once every day I sit there like, yo, this shit's still happening. Right, 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 right. No, yeah. no, no. I get that, but yeah. it's like, like um, damn. I was just listening to. I just like for me, like yesterday, like I went through vinyl. And oh, I dope. found all of my priority Run DMC 12 inch, the, the box set that y'all put oh, out. Oh, wow. Like. Get so out I of just here. started listening to Suck MCs. I started listening to, I mean, everything. It's like really? that. Like all of that shit. Like, yeah. So right. it's just like, oh, yeah. I'm I mean, having... yeah. It's good because um, I've been listening to a lot of um, uh, Chris Cornell, Soundgarden, Audio Slave stuff. Right. So, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's not a bad thing of what's going on. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, so, no, I, I, is that, are you just, is there no hip hop? Are you just not listening to anything new at all right now? Man, if I listen to hip hop, I'm listening to everything before Rapper's Delight was even a record. I'm listening to all of those Red Alert tapes, Cold Crush, Fantastic Five, Treacherous Three, all that. <laughs> I hate it <laughs> my wife, my wife, Chantel, uh, my beautiful wife, just uh -huh. brought this to show you, DMC. That's official. It's official That's like a ref with a whistle. I brought these out. <laughs> look at this. Yeah, yeah. Yo, 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 look how crispy yo, this is, B. Look crazy. at that. Look at that. Oh, that Damn, thank, thank you, you honey. Thank you. I wish, yo, if my wife wasn't like really slaving at like making dinner, I would put her on because she loves you, D. But, um, <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, no doubt. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, yeah, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I got to show you this too. Hold up. Is, I got to show you. That? Oh, no. Wow, my wife's going to bring it. What so my, I'm going to show you. So my friend Jonathan Mannion gave me to gave oh, this to me. Oh, Big John, what's up? He gave me this as a gift. Oh, yeah, I remember that photo shoot. That's ridiculous. Yeah, so I the have Duke this. he wrote with the Adidas. Yeah, that's from Jay. That's Jam Master Jay's. Yes, chain. that's Jay's chain. Yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah, so he uh, he blew this up for me, and he um. That's incredible. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece. Thank Yo, you, see, I, I got That's these a piece for you. of work. Oh, the fat laces? The black ones. You said you wanted the right? Fat black laces, yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> so my question to you is, where do you find those at? Um, You know what? I found a store down in Soho that had a, the whole rack of them, and I just like oh. stockpiled wow. them. And then the store went out of business. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, That's so cool. I got blue, red, green, uh, uh, orange, and black. Yeah, people used to tell me, oh, you got to go all the way to Japan to get the fat laces nowadays. Uh, I, don't I, think, I, I don't think that's accurate. I don't no, think you that's could get them in New, You could get them here in the States, right? I'm yeah, sure of course. Oh, Yo, if you go, to, if you go to, to any Jamaican beef patty spot, they got the fat laces. Oh, like, the fat laces. <laughs> any, any, any Jamaican beef patty spot with the cocoa bread uh, and, and the roti and the peas and rice. They got the roti and the fat they laces. They got the fat laces. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt. And you can go to Canal Street, B. Like, you can go get a fake Supreme wallet, a fake uh, Rolex, and fat laces. Like, you'll, yep, you'll be good. Yeah. 
it'll that's be yeah, good. Canal Street, yeah, that's true. Yeah, now when it's you all over, like I got a picture of Canal oh. Street at 5 p.m. at Friday, empty. Wow. Going really? out, going to the Holland Tunnel, empty. Really? Not a soul really? on the street. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you're <laughs> trying to sell a fake watch at this point. Yeah. No, I would I would buy a fake watch right now on Canal Street for like a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> you get a good deal right now. Like nobody's oh, buying yeah. shit out there. Like yeah, you'd be like, yo, give me, that. I'll give you 50 cents for like five of them. So yeah, do you guys, like, sure, sure. Huh? Do you guys remember when you first met? I want to see if, well, I remember. I remember like it was yesterday. Where? Okay. So Jam Master J discovered me in Grand Wizard Tony D's basement. Where's I ran that for at? Grand, Grand Wizard uh, in Coney Island. So Coney Grand Island. Wizard Tony D used to be the DJ for a, a group called the Bad Boys. They had a record called Inspector Gadget. Yes. And they had that other yeah. record. Oh, Veronica, Veronica. Oh, for girl. Oh, right. Veronica, right. Veronica. So girl. That was huge. Jam Master J. Yeah, huge. Biggest. Yep, yo, dude. huge. So yep. Jam Master J saw me ramen in his in his basement. And, and J leaned back and he went, man, if white boys start ramen like that, we're finished. Really? Right? He said yeah. That. Yeah. So then he told me that you guys were doing a show upstate. And he wanted me to go on stage with Davey DMX. Wow. So that two or three days later, we went over to Hollis to meet the tour bus. And I got on the tour bus. For, I was the first tour bus I ever went on. Wow. And Jam, it was Jay. It was Ronnie Ray. May he rest in peace. Yeah, rest in it peace, was, yeah, So, um, And then you got on the bus, drunk as fuck. With 40s. At least four. And you right. had four dudes, and they all have 40s. Yep. And then Jay said, hey. This is my man, Search. And you went, uh-huh. What up, Stretch? And I said, <laughs> I said, no, no, no. My name is, you know, my it's, name is Search. Safe. Yeah, and you were like, mm-hmm. So we go up to this show, and it was, it was, I mean, it was the biggest stage I've ever been was on. Was it Rochester? Yes. It was I Rochester. Rem I rem yes. I remember, I remember that day. And Davey DMX was opening. Davey nah. D, you're all the best. Cut this speak because it is so fun. I remember that day because we we drove from Hollis to. Yep. Up, I remember now. Right. It was a cloudy day too. And it was a cloudy day, I and remember that. runs and runs. Dad was on the bus. May he rest in peace. Mr. Dad's mom. His, he came. Mr. Simmons came. Um. Who else? Like I everybody. That every, day. So Big D so was there. Big D was I there. That's exactly that right. Day. Everybody. Everybody. A whole Hollis crew was in there. Yep. Like everybody. Yep. And I'm like starstruck because I used to go to all the parks. When you have the park jams on 195th and 202nd yeah. with like the yeah. albino twins and all yeah. those. Like I used to be that little white kid that was trying to not get stuck up and watch y'all right. rhyme and like it all of that. Did. Like the wow. Play, Playboy Club and Grand, Grand Wizard that. Reggie Reg and all those kids, right? Yep. So now I'm in the bus with like Run DMC and Davey D and I'm being told to like open with Davey D. Did like, you have I'm, a record? You didn't have no record. No, I had not. Had no, no. I would literally, just I rhymed rhymes. just, I, I rhymed like, I thought when, when they put me in the basement, it was, uh -huh. it was, it was uh, Grandmaster D from Houdini, Jam Master J, uh -huh. and Grand Wizard Tony D. Wow. And when they took me in the, in the basement, I'd never, uh -huh. I'd never seen a studio before. And the first thing in my mind is like, oh, man, I'm about to get stuck up by the three greatest DJs in hip hop right now. Like, they're about to rob me. Like, right. I was ha and I was happy. Like, if I'm going to get snuffed, yep. I might as well At get least snuffed by, by them. By them. Yeah. You know? So two days later, Jay took me to this show in Rochester. I'm on the bus. Like, everybody's drinking, smoking, doing what yep. they do. I'm just, like, just in awe. And we get up to Rochester, and Davey says, all right, look, I'm going to pass you the mic, you rhyme, and then I'm going to do my thing, and I, you can rhyme over my beats. We get out on the stage. Davey introduces me. And my whole thing was I was also a dancer. I danced my ass off. So I start dancing, and they're like, go, white boy. Go, white boy. Wow, go, wow. white boy. Right? So I rhyme. I kick this, like, 16. And Davey's trying to do his show, and I'm so amped. I start going, everybody, like, I just took over his show right, right, right. to the point where Davey just grabbed me. He's like, yo, get the fuck off my, off stage, my stage, man. That's get it. off my wow. stage. So I got off the stage, and Jay comes over to me, and he just hugs me. And you were like. You was open then. 
you were like, yo, you're fresh, man. You're fresh. And that was the first time. Like, I was like, wow. Yeah. Wow. DMC said I was fresh. Yeah. You made it. No, no. He wasn't fake at all. He was surprisingly um, um, good. Like, like, like you know, I, I was waiting for some hip hop to hit it. Now, he had bars. Like, he had flow and lyrics yeah. and, and, and um, he, had, he had presence flow and lyrics he i remember like, the lyrics i kicked i it, 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 so you think you rock well got a snowball chance in hell to catch an mc search because i will ring your bell and so you would tell that my record's gonna sell because when i'm finished rapping all the boys are gonna yell you will be so excited that my fire's been ignited and that all the party people have now been sighted so if you're in my sight keep rocking all night and let the power of the party glow far and bright right. my name is mc <laughs> search and i'm here to say the kid right here is from far rock away and when you see me on the mic i do not play so if you uh, want to sit out of my way <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, th right. those were definitely those were the bars. Right. That's so crazy. yeah. So it was it was crazy. Anyway, that was the first time. But the first What's time we say? hung out, the first time we hung out, hung out was at the Afros video in New Orleans. Oh yeah, for the three, two day, it was like a two day two day party. shoot. That's right. Can you hear me? I'm yeah. Now can we hear you? Okay. So we I just don't to want to hear you. That's yeah, the problem, yeah. Grillo. We, we're <laughs> talking. We don't want to hear you. No, but like you, like you guys, what your lyrics, what I don't really hear now is like each song told a story. The lyrics had meant something from the the, the, the last lyric. It like it all played into one big song and told the story. It was like fun. It was awesome, and I just don't hear that anymore. I don't because think it's, yeah. Go ahead, D. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, please. I was please. I was just saying, for hip hop, the whole MC DJ thing, it was all about presence. And presentation so of course it, it's supposed to carry it's not supposed to be monotonous but it's supposed to carry on you know what i'm saying like i went from when i first started rapping rap rap when i first started emceeing <laughs> i didn't want to be an mc when i hip-hop i wanted to be grandmaster flash i heard grandmaster flash do the um the quick mix was with no good times, good times, good times, good times. So I didn't know what it was. I was like, how is he doing it? Boom, bang, me and my brother. We sold out comic books because I was a big comic book head to get some turntables. And I just went in the basement and I became Grandmaster Flash. My original name was Grandmaster Get High because you didn't need old English or weed to be intoxicated because my music would give you everything that you need. So that was like 78, I think it was. So my brother, he brings home Rapper's Delight. And um, I heard Rapper's Delight. I still didn't care about it. But the only thing that I liked about Rapper's Delight was the Big Bank Hank rhyme talked about Superman. So I was like, oh, shoot, he talking about superheroes because I'm a comic book kid. So my main thing, I wanted to be Flash. But then a couple of weeks later, my brother Alfred, he brings home this red label record said Enjoy on it. And it said Super Rapping. And I was like, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Farm. I'm like, yo, that's that DJ that I'm trying to be right now. Let me see what this is about. So I put that I put that needle on the record. And now you gotta remember, sir, it's hip um Rappers of Light was basically hip hop to hibbit to hibbit, you know. But there was hip hop. That blew my mind. It was cool, but I, I couldn't um i couldn't I, I couldn't find no no connection to it besides the superman rhyme i put this red label enjoy record grandmaster the flash and the furious five super rapping now that was another thing i connected with super rapping that's like superman and superheroes but i put that needle on that record this thing said it was a party night everybody was breaking the house was screaming and the bass was shaking and it won't be long till everybody knowing that flashes on the b-box going and dip doom, doom, doom. and that then it said shot on now and then a voice said italian caucasian japanese spanish indian negro vietnamese mc dish jockeys y'all Fly kids for the young ladies introducing the crew you gotta see to believe but five different voices one two three four five mcs one dude said i'm melly mel and i rock it so well and then the next dude said and i'm mr ness because i rock the best 
Then the third dude said Raheem and all the ladies dream. And this fourth dude said cowboy and I make the jump for joy. Now then the fifth dude goes Creole. The other four dude goes solid go, kid Creole, playing a role. After that search, I was like, give me a pen. I got to do that. This is what I want to do. I got to do that. So when I first started writing rhymes, I was easy D. Search, you know the rhyme. They used to call, call me, me Easy D because the rap on, on the mic so easily. But now they call me call DMC. Me DMC. It's DMC right. of the party. The D's for yeah, doing it all, all, all the time. time. It's it's rhyme, mm, that that all or mine. C4, C4 cool, cool, cool as can be. Like and why you wear them sneakers? Rockin Rockin yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, my favorite, so, my favorite line, my favorite line was. If, if you say I stole your rhymes, we're going to have to fight. Have to I fight because I just made the motherfuckers up last night. Right. <laughs> so, so what I wanted to say, everything, you know, it, you were supposed to carry on. You, you wasn't supposed to be overbearing, though. It wasn't about continually my, reminding people where you was at a year ago. You let them know, one year ago I was here, but now I'm here. So it was all about development and bringing your audience along with you. Just like Search said, I, I was hearing you search in the beginning. It's a lot of great stuff out there. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of great music. Like, um, Grant Puba, about 10 years ago, he dropped his solo album, and it was some of the best lyrics that I ever heard. The problem is the radio ain't going to play it. But, yo, you could go out finding find it on vinyl. You can find it on the internet. You know what I'm saying? You can, you can see Grant Puba. Say, Puba, what you working on? Send me an MP3 or something new. So it's all there. What has changed is the industry has changed. Mm. But like um, Sir said, Premier, Bumpy Knuckles. I'm with B Bumpy Knuckles is producing. He ain't even rhyming. He's producing mm -hmm. an album for me right now. These cats, man, Search, me, Big Daddy Kane, we don't get over. We get better. Yes. Always, I got to tell little kids. It's just like wine. You get better with time. The more you do something, the better you get. So it's out there. It's just that we need an industry that is going to allow everything to showcase at once. But since it's not the case, well, that's don't, I do 355 shows a year. The right. MTV just don't know that. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? But you don't so, need, at this point, you don't need MTV because you still got 7,000, 8,000 people showing up. Exactly. You know, every night. But exactly. I will yep. say the two things that I noticed recently in what my wife and I are building um, in terms of the Timeless Podcast Company is it. it uh, Where do you do your podcast from? From here, from the lovely Orlando, Florida, from the crib. Right on. Um, but, but the company that we're building is based on the stories of the past and based on all our stories. But in a way that is immersive sound design. So think of it as podcast with THX sound design, right? Right, right, right. But the point I'm trying to make is that the main difference, and I tell this people, this is my like go-to right now. The difference between the Rolling Stones, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, and Led Zeppelin, and Run DMC, A Tribe Called Quest, Queen Latifah, and Public Enemy, mm -hmm. is that when those rock artists were at their peak, 60s, 70s, and 80s, there were maybe four to 600 radio stations that were playing them 80, 90 times a week, right? Not, separate from MTV. Right, right. Hip hop in the 80s had none. From 1980 to 1986, there were zero, zero stations playing hip hop. Yeah, Unless right, it was BAI sure. or BAU, and it was at midnight or one o'clock in the morning, two days BAU a week. BAU was our first interview. Right. I know. So, so, and then, as you moved on, you had WNYU, you had KCR. So college radio from 85 to 88, maybe a couple of days a week. It wasn't yep. until Kiss and BLS in 87, 89. And that, and that was still Friday and Saturday. Day, yeah, and, and, only, and only four. It, it started one hour a night. Yep. So you had Red Alert, and you had Chuck Chill Out, and you had Mr. Magic, and you had Molly Mall that had to play literally hundreds of records in 60 minutes. So you didn't get yep. any, the there's no turnover. Like there's no turnover, right? Yep. So when you were at your peak, you had no pleasure of radio. There was, you didn't have yep. the pleasure of radio. And it wasn't at until all. there was a handful of stations, 1991, you started to do the records that were trying to move into that space, right? 
But what happened was the turnover was so fast that we went from NWA to Heavy D to DOC to Dr. Dre to Snoop in a matter of four years, and there still was no radio. It was 1994, the only four, the only four cities to play hip-hop more than after 6 p.m. were New York, L.A., San Francisco, and Boston. That was it. Yeah. That's 1996. Where, where go. 1996. What was the 19... station in Frisco? What was the station KMEL. in KMEL. KMEL. Yep, that's it. Yep. So you go cross Larry Jackson go from there. Yeah, Larry Jackson got his start at KMEL. 1996 yep. was the first time. Now, now think about what you said. 1978 is when you got involved in hip hop. Yep. 1996 was the first time that every state in the country had a station that played hip hop 24 hours a day. But think about 96 and the artists that came out during that time. Buster Rhymes, Missy Elliott, Jay Z, Nas, um, Hot Boys, uh, Lil Wayne, you know, I, and the list goes on. All of those yeah. artists, they're still prolific today. And yep. the artists that came after them are still prolific today, whether that's right. 50, whether that's Wayne, whether that's now J. Cole, continuing yep. Jay Z, Beyonce. Mm -hmm. All of those artists had the pleasure of radio. Radio. Yep. We didn't have that pleasure. So my whole thing is if we had that, right? But we didn't, but if we had that, we would be able to have that longevity. But the beautiful thing now, yeah, brother, the right. thing now is that Urban AC radio, and I know I'm getting a little deep in the weeds and people are like, yo, what the fuck is Urban? But the stations they used to play, <laughs> like Alexander O'Neill and Whitney Houston and Anita Baker and Luther Vandross, yep. now they're playing Digital Underground, Heavy D, Run DMC, right. Houdini. So they're right, accepting new music from our artists. Mass Days right. is a perfect example. Mass Days two years ago put out an album. It's probably the best album of the year. And he had a record called Young Black Intelligence, YBI. Shit was incredible. Right. Like last year, I did a, an album and I worked with Rostrum on an album called Top Shelf 1988. Mm -hmm. We were on, we were on Good Morning America. We were on Good Morning right. America. It was the number two most watched show for their year. And that opened the door I the next year for Slick Rick, for Public Enemy, for Salt and Pepper. So right. we, as a collective, the Run DMCs of the world, the Houdinis of the world, what has happened is we got put over here. You guys go over here. But yeah. right now, the Michael Strahan's of the world, the Kelly Rippers of the world, the Jimmy Kimmel's of the world, the Jimmy Fallon's of the world, they the celebrate Stephen Colbert. Yo, they love yeah. us. They don't celebrate. Right. They fucking on our dicks. Right. They <laughs> riding on dicks like a thoroughbred. So we got to knock like on those that. doors. We got to knock on Trevor Noah's door like, yo, mommy, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. And he's going <laughs> to spaz out. He's going to go, oh, DMC is in the fucking building. Yo, I guarantee you right. Jimmy Fallon will fucking jump on that shit. Yo, he... We already what talked happened? to him. So I'm just saying what we're what we're missing. It's a simple two letter up. word. What we're missing. You're oh. breaking up. I'm not breaking up. You're breaking up. You Oh my, my feet. Yeah, you're breaking up. Right. Yeah. What we're missing, it's two simple words. Public relations. Oh, turn it down. Oh, hold on a second. Noah, what's going on? You can fix that? It's not I'll it's call not, that my producer. It's it's his phone. Oh yeah? Okay. Yeah. So guys, I want to give you a heads up. Yeah, so so what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Like around six fifty-five, I'm going to jump up on my roof because at seven o'clock, this city goes fuck wild. Okay, they, everybody gets on their roof on the roof and they all start banging pots and pans, and it's oh, all nice. a, a tribute to the the work the frontline workers that are out there. So I'm going to jump on my phone. We're going to stay live. We're going to still do this, but I want you guys to witness how this city comes together in time of crisis. It's it's chilling. It give you the chills. Everybody at seven o'clock on their roof. Going buck wild, thanking all the doctors, the nurses, the bus drivers, everybody that's putting their, their lives on the line. So at 7 o'clock, you're going to see what this city does and how we get together in times of crisis. It's sick. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I'm looking forward oh, wow. to that. But yeah. TMC, that's, that's what we're missing right now. We're, we're missing public relations. We're missing people like Leila <laughs> Turkin. You know what I'm saying? People, yeah. people that can go and knock on those doors. And I told... Yeah. I told I like, you know what... I like being old. It's funny. Um, I speak at a lot of middle schools and high schools. And the kids are funny, like, Mr. DMC, because I'm like 50 years old now. Mr. DMC, you guys used to right. used to this and that. You used to. And I'm saying, yeah, because I'm used to doing it. And right. the kids will laugh. I always play with them. And I have one kid said, Mr. DMC, you guys are over. And I've said, thank you. 
And then he was like, huh? Like he was trying to diss it. And he was like, you guys are over. You old school cats are over. And I was like, thank you. He was like, huh? I think it was like a 10th grader to do it. I said, yeah, yeah, I love being over. And everybody, all the kids are scratching their head. And I'd be like, yeah, I was just over in Russia the other day. Next week, I'm going over to England, this and that. And then the teachers, yeah. you know, the teachers of my generation, well, they, yeah, that's right, run DMC. And then um, the other teacher was like, yeah, then you know, the, um, you y'all saw Mr. McDaniels on TV this past weekend. He was on the Grammys. And it, it's so funny. I'm standing right in front of them. They still didn't believe it was me. The teachers was like, yeah, Run and D came out and performed with Steven Tyler at the Grammys. This past. That wasn't him. It became this whole big debate and stuff like that. But one of the things that we have searched that a lot of other people in the whole industry don't have is a presence. Like the, when I first saw you rap, the way you touched me, you still do that now. So people that know me know when I show, I had one, um, I played in Cleveland. And the young dudes came up to me and said, yo, yo, DMC, man, you are old head, but you put it down way better than all these young cats now. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's a, enough justification because it makes me feel like I'm 15 in the park again. Right. You know what I'm I was saying? Talking, that's, yeah. No, and, and I didn't you know mean to interrupt. That's crazy. Yeah. No, no I was all, talking to um, I was talking to 50 Cent, maybe it was like four months ago, and he said, you know, the craziest shit is, he goes, I didn't even think about this. He said, but my record... Um, my first album, Get Richard Die Trying, and in the club, you know, yeah. go shorty, it's your birthday. Yeah. Yo, that shit is 20 years old this year. That's crazy. I don't believe that, but it is. But, yeah. And people, and when, yo, and when the young kids come up to him, like Young Thug and Smoke Perp, and they're like, yo, what up, OG? Yeah. Like, he's yeah. like, what? I'm the OG? Right. I did an interview. Yep. I did an interview. Outcast is old school now. Right, I did an interview with um, what's homeboy? Uh, Wait, uh, Eminem's old school now. <laughs> I did oh, an no. interview with Soldier Boy. I did an interview right. with Soldier Boy. I'll never forget this. I had a show called the Old School Show, and we were syndicated in like thirty markets. So his label rep said, "Hey, could you do me do me us a favor? Could you interview him for your show? We know he's not old school, but you know, I was like, you know, what am I going to talk to this kid about? He's seven, right? Right, you know, like." But then it, it, it <laughs> but it peaked my interest. But it, but it peaked my interest because I'm like, wait a minute, I don't. I've never talked to someone who got a record this big right now about our music. It's huge, you know. So right. this was like, you know, 2009, like when 2010. And I said to him, "What was the first rap record you remember hearing?" Mm -hmm. And he said, "50 Cent in the Club." And I said, wow. "How old were you?" And he said, "I was three years old." Wow. It's not his That's fault he crazy. wasn't... Right, but it's not his fault he wasn't born in 78. It's not right his fault he all. wasn't born in 1970. He didn't need to be born in 78. Right, he it's what he learned. Race, he was three. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's, wow. but that, from that point, but that's also where his education came from. Of so course. what he learned from 50, what he learned from the artists that came during that era is what inspired him to rhyme. So you got Lil exactly. Wayne, you got BG, you got all those that's that why music it from the south. Changes like it does, right? Because the kid now think about the kid that was three, um, eight years ago, right? Yeah, that's he's now crazy. right. Yeah, you got little TJ signed to Def Jam. Kid is seventeen years old. That's he was crazy. born in two thousand three. That's ridiculous. So, yeah, so when he was two because we say uh, pe people think uh, nobody's born when they're born. No, he was born in two thousand three. <laughs> You think they even I got sneakers already, older or? than him, man. Like real That's talk. Crazy. Like I got chains older than him. I got That's watches so cool. older than him. It. I got sneakers older than you. Yeah, <laughs> yo, but but I do want to ask you though, because I, I, I'm a one thing you and I have in common is I'm a I'm a comic book head too. Yes. You have been doing animation for comics for like how many years now? Ten? Three years now. Oh, no, it's three. three. I just oh. officially as a company is um three years ago I started my comic book company, Daryl Makes Comics. Okay, got you. I thought so, it, I uh, thought that you had started doing stuff for Marvel like years ago and it No, no, no. I grew up. No, I grew up since kindergarten. Yeah. Since kindergarten I was an avid comic book collector. Like even when I couldn't read them. Yeah. It was just, just Marvel. Because Marvel yeah, Mar yeah, right. But Marvel was New York City. Yeah. DC was cool, don't get me wrong. I had Flash, Justice League, Wonder Woman, all of that. Mm -hmm. Flash, Yo, that's how Green Lantern that, was my favorite superheroes to draw, but 
Marvel comic books, Stan Lee was was just like a god to me because he put the superheroes in New York. Yeah. So his books educated me about the city I actually lived in. It wasn't until three years ago, um, I met a young man named Riggs Morales. Yeah, big Riggs. Who was Eminem's yeah. right hand man? Yeah, yeah Riggs yeah. is my man. He looked at me when he found out who I was. Like we thought we just had hip hop in comic common. When I met Riggs, we had a music meeting. And before the meeting, he sat down with me. He was like, yo, D, I don't really want to fan out right now. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm supposed to be professional, but I'll never get the chance again. He just asked me, what was it like when I was a little kid? And I was like, well, I went to Catholic school my whole life, and all I did was read, collect, and draw comics. He was like, comics? I was like, yeah. He said, comics? We sat there and searched for four hours, and we taught comics. And once oh, wow. he found out, because, you know, he, he said, I always knew there was something about you. And I told him, the Easter eggs was always there. If a king of rock, I'm DJ Run, I could scratch. I didn't say I'm DMC, I could rap. I said I'm DMC, I could draw. Right. Crash through walls, come through floors, bust through ceilings, and knock, knock down doors. Floors. That's superheroes. Dude. That, yeah. Rappers don't just superheroes. Speaking so, of, speaking of like superheroes, right now we got the superheroes on the street right now, right? Grillo? Yeah, it's coming up, man. Oh, it's, yeah. I'm on my roof right oh, now. Yeah, you can see do. what's going on up there. That's that's Hell's Kitchen, Times Square in the background. And uh, we crazy. got people ready, uh, already coming out on their roofs, getting ready to really deal with the superheroes that, you know, what that, that come out every day and do the hard jobs that no one else wants to do. Superheroes exist. Like sure. the people in the, the supermarket that, that come to work every day to make sure you got food on your plate. The sanitation yep. people that come and pick up the garbage for you. All the weird little things that you didn't think that you don't, you know, you take for granted all the time. These people right. are now saving our lives. So... The, the city knows how to you know, pay tribute to the people, man. You're going to see what should happen in like three minutes because it's going to blow up. That's amazing. I can't wait. Yo, so I, 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 that's right. I met uh, uh, D through a friend of mine, John Montabano, but also Mike Nagin wanted to say what's up. My friend Mike Nagin runs Comic, oh. uh, comic, comic uh, yes, what is it, uh, Artist Alley at, at, yeah, at New York Comic Con. Yeah, uh, so. A big problem. shout out to my Mike's two homeboys, my man uh, Dean Haspiel and Josh Neufeld. They've been doing, you know, um, they've been doing comic books forever. So shout out to my homeboys Legends. and Johnny Green. Hell yeah. Yeah. So uh, where, where can people find your comics, D? Um, you could go, Tag. I don't know my websites, man. I don't know none of that. I have to <laughs> go on it. Go, go He's on the my, artist. Um, you got to talk to Riggs wait, to wait, get wait. the information. I, I have, I have um, Daryl Makes Comics Instagram. And we have Daryl Makes Comics website. That'll tell you my Twitter and all that other stuff. Ah, cool. Sure. Cool. But I'm in every, my, my comic is in every comic book store gro globally, which is a cool thing. Yeah, yeah. You say, I, I, you're such a nice guy. You sit and talk to everybody that comes up. There's, a, there's always a giant line at your booth. And uh, you sit, you uh, take personal time that takes, say what's up to everybody, ask people their names. It's so cool to watch you work when you're in that yep. situation, man. You know, yeah, you can just you sign know, that I'm shit not, and go. I'm not special. You know, yeah, right, but I don't think I'm special. I'm a fan. Yeah. Everything that you love, I love. Yeah, it's true. That's why you that's why you, you and Search is like two of the nicest people I ever met and like two of my idols growing up. So it's so cool to be able to like sit here and talk to you guys. You know, one good thing that came out of this coronavirus is able to sit here and talk to you for YouTube guys. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Well, thank you. If you would have told you. little 12 year old me I'd be doing this right now, I would have told you to go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, in inspiration works, works both ways. Exactly If right. you tell yeah. me, yo, DMC, you inspire me, by you telling me that I'm inspired. Yeah, Amen. that's, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's, that's, it's, right. that's the way it should be. Amen. Yep. So, but yeah, but behind me is Times Square, which is desolate. It's weird how quiet the city is, like, at night, when you, when you even during the day, you, you know, you, you're used to that bustle when you walk, and it's just quiet. It's just, it's like from right. a movie. So, um. Amazing. Well, at least, like, I would say 90% of the people are, are listening, except for the people on 3rd Avenue and Avenue D. They ain't listening to nothing. <laughs> they think it's a Spanish wow, block party. The... They, they're out there. They got a boombox. They got a cooler. They got, like, lawn chairs. They're outside sitting, chilling, dancing. I think it's a block party. I'm like, they got no masks. They're, like, right on top of each other. So, it's the, like, the people. some people don't get it. The they're going to be after today. Down. Yeah, shit. It's about, shit's about to blow up. Okay. So I have people like beeping their horns and shit. There we go. Seven o'clock, baby. 
Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock and it's time to rock. Pots and pans out on the block. Hey. Yo, you hear that shit? shit uptown, downtown, east side, west side, everybody. Hello? <gasps> Somebody else coming on. It's... Hey, guys. Hey, I'm... hey Ron DMC. Hey, I'm Hey, Peter. what's happening? It's Stacy. It's Steve's friend. I was on this before. That's for the dog. Everybody, man. Yeah, question. Would you, could you guys come on a little, like, brief collaboration as a song? You guys could sing it. Thank everybody. <laughs> Thank everybody what? He wants to freestyle from us. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> show, he wants us to show rhyme about, show, about, about a little, uh, he wants a little ditty, if you will. He wants a ditty. A little us. ditty between you. A ditty uh, ditty from you and, and, and honor and, and, woo, in honor, in honor of all the people that are out there. You guys want to do something? No. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> no, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to say no. No, I don't want to say no. The reason why I said that was funny. It was, um, I, was, I was reading something. It's like, yo, how come? How come everybody? You, a, a, a rapper does an interview. They always want the rapper to rap. You don't tell Bruce Springsteen to sing. sing right. You know what I'm saying? Michael, do this. You leave it no. You don't just sing. But you know, we're supposed to be spontaneous. <laughs> no, like like Chuck says, I don't freestyle much, but I write them as such. Yep. Yo, you know what? I always said to G Rap that I always wanted to battle them off the top of my head because I'm right. I could freestyle. Because that's right. how I had to come up being like one of the only white MCs I ever saw. Like people would test me all the time. You had to be ready all the time. All the time. See? So I, I always said to G Rap, like I was like, yo, I want to battle you. I want to battle you. He's like, yo, I don't freestyle, but I'll I'll write you to death. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. Yep. But that was the but greatest now, to, moment. To all, to Yo, to the greatest the moment of the there, year man. is when yeah, Grillo no. said, Will you rhyme? And he said, No. No. <laughs> He's just a Yo, killer, I'm gonna right? I'm gonna isolate that. I'm just gonna isolate that. Yo, no That's the cooler. Nope. <laughs> no. No, nah, but to all to all the people out there, man. Yeah, we're real all talk. in this together. And what I mean yep. all in this together, not just because of this coronavirus. Yeah. How people feel, how people think, and now I would hope that this is a wake up call that what we doing, how we act, how we feel, the way we're thinking, we're caring about each other, we're concerned about everybody. When things do get back to normal or somewhat normal, this is supposed to continue on. It should be Christmas every day and not just on December 25th. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. And if any of you, if any of you, people listening, people that I know, start acting funny like things was before this came along, we're going to have to check y'all and put y'all in check. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 this is a time of respect and care. Yep. This, this next generation, out, especially think about the kids growing up in this well, I see. Mm -hmm. they seeing how we act now I'm like, yeah. mm -hmm. when things get back normal i don't want these adults flipping there should be no more disrespect mm -hmm. you know, there, there should be no more i'm more important to you because mm -hmm. if you do act that way we're going to start checking y'all they're still going by the way they're still howling oh, no, i hear them I hear <laughs> yeah them. crazy yeah. loud and but, clear you know thank you for having me on Steve. yeah I man gotta, thank gotta, you gotta, grillo thank down. you Yo, I'm glad I was able to put you two together. It's an honor and a pleasure for both of you to be here. I'm still not going to be able to sleep tonight thinking about this. No. <laughs> yeah, Dean, it was, I'm so, that was such a surprise, man. DMC, thank you. I love you, brother. Thank you. Love thank you, too, you. man. It's really Yo. good seeing you, sir. I hope to see both. I hope to see you too, Steve, in person, man. Yeah, definitely. Over. Soon. We'll all get Hello. together do something. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> Next time you ask me to do your show, 
woman in the skull. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I'm never gonna live this one down. I love it. <laughs> See y'all later. See you later. Yo, peace. Be safe. That's a new goodbye. Oh wow. I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> Talk about like a bucket list thing. I just had two of the biggest hip hop icons on my show. I want to thank both of them. MC Search Show is on live. I'll, I'll promote it tomorrow. Um, I was so happy to surprise him. Uh, that show just made history, it made me choke up. I don't know what to say right now. You know, uh, I want to thank everybody that makes this happen, like Noah, and uh, uh, I don't know. I can't think right now. Bright Shot, uh, F Shop Tax Management. Uh, uh, the, the face man's place. <laughs> um, oh, Sterling Assault. My boy Alfie with his rings. You like custom jewelry. You go to Sterling Assault. You mentioned the grills at the Shock XL. You get 10% off. You could shop online or you could ask for something custom. Uh, uh, after Shock XL is now on. A, uh, we have a web page, grills at the Shock XL.com. You can go there and link up to our YouTube channel. Um, I think this might have been the best show I've ever done. Um, I, I'm just going to be speechless now. For the rest of the day, I'm sure my sh my phone's just about to blow up. And um, thank you, Noah, for all your help. Thank Joe uh, at Pro Media, who's ever helped me. Anybody who's ever helped me, Tim Sabian, everybody else. But, you know, what a way to kick off my first. Yesterday was the first show, but it was a trial run. This one, it's Friday night. Shit just got real. Thank you so much. There's a city in the background. I'm wearing my fucking uh, DMC hip hop fucking. This is the influence, my fashion. Little tribute to them. But um, I think I need a shot, everybody. Have a wonderful, happy, safe weekend. Um, I don't know what to say. That was fucking crazy. I don't know. I'm never going to live that down. Little me is like, what just happened? So uh, <laughs> big shout out to everybody. Peace and love and stay safe. And thank you for listening. Crap. Oh, my God. I'll never get over this.